Good morning, dear friends. We welcome you to this Mass of Saturday, the 12th week of Easter, 12th week in ordinary time. And in this Mass, I'll be praying for you, and praying for your loved ones, praying for the intentions you bring to God every morning in your homes, and asking that God may hear and grant them. I'll also pray for those who may be sick or troubled in some way at this time, especially those whose condition is desperate, that they may attract the, the hearing and attention of the Almighty God to their situation and condition. I'll also want to pray for all those who are sick with coronavirus, especially at this time in our country where the numbers continue to rise and increase and communities are desperate that God may help us find a more measured way to handle and to make and to deal with this situation. Pray for those who have died. Pray and ask God's rest and peace. We pray for, continue to pray for our, our hospital workers, nurses, doctors, and social workers who provide care, that God may protect them and keep them safe. Now I'll invite you to bring your other intentions to God as we pray for those who also celebrate birthdays and anniversaries. Our opening hymn today is Holy God, we praise your name. Holy God, we praise thy name. Lord of all, we bow before thee. All on earth thy saints are plain. All in heaven above adore thee, infinite thy vast domain, everlasting is thy reign, infinite thy vast domain, everlasting in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God our Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and with your spirit. My dear friends, to prepare ourselves to celebrate this Holy Mass, let us call to mind our sins and ask God's mercy and forgiveness. For the times we demonstrated unbelief and unfaithfulness to you, O God, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. For the times we trusted in our own abilities and never looked up to you, Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. For the times we failed, Almighty God, to hear the concerns of others and to respond, we saw, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. May He forgive us our sins. May He bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, that we may always revere and love your holy name. For you never deprive of your guidance those you set firm on the foundation of your love. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Our first reading is a reading from the book of Lamentations. The Lord has consumed without pity all the dwelling of Jacob. He has torn down his anger, the fortresses of Doda Judah. He has brought to the ground in dishonor her king and her princess. On the ground, in silence sit the old men, the old men of Doda Zion. They strew dust on their heads and guard themselves with sackcloth. The maidens of Jerusalem bow their heads to the ground. Worn out from weeping are my eyes. Within me all is in torment. My gall is poured out on the ground because of the downfall of the daughter of my people. 
as child and infant faint away in the open spaces of the town. In vain, they ask their mothers, where is the grain? As they faint away, like the wounded in the streets of the city, and breath their last in their mother's arms. To what can I liken or compare you, O daughter Jerusalem? What example can I show you for your comfort, virgin daughter Zion? For great as the sea is your downfall, who can heal you? Your prophets had for your false and specious visions. They did not lay bare your guilt to avert your faith. They behold for you, they beheld for you in vision false and misleading portents. Cry out to the Lord, mourn, O daughter Zion. Let your tears flow like a torrent day and night. Let there be no respite for you, no repose for your eyes. Rise up, surely in the night, at the beginning of every watch. Pour out your hearts like water in the presence of the Lord. Lift up your hands to him. For the lives of, you, of your little ones who faint from hunger at the corner of every street. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our response to the psalm is, Lord, forget not the souls of your poor ones. Why, O oh God, have you cast us off forever? Why does your anger smolter against the sheep of your pasture? Remember your flock, which you bailed up of old, the tribe you redeemed as your inheritance, Mount Zion, where you took up your abode. Lord, forget not the souls of your poor ones. Turn your steps towards the other ruins, towards all the damage the enemy has done in the sanctuary. Your foes roar triumphantly in your shrine. They have set up their tokens of victory. They, have, they are like men coming up with axes to a clump of trees. Lord, forget not the souls of your poor ones. With chisel and hammer, they hack at all the paneling of the sanctuary. They set your sanctuary on fire. The place where your name abides, they have raised and profaned. Lord, forget not the souls of your poor ones. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. Christ took away our infirmities and bore our diseases. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. When Jesus entered Capernaum, a centurion approached him and appealed to him, saying, Lord, my servant is lying at home, paralyzed, suffering dreadfully. He said to him, I will come and cure him. The centurion said in reply, Lord, I am not worthy to have you enter under my roof. Only say the word, and my servant will be healed. For I too am a man subject to authority, with soldiers under me. And I say to one, go, and he goes, to another, come here, and he comes. And to my slave, do this, and he does it. When Jesus heard this, he was amazed and said to those following him, Amen, I say to you, in no one in Israel have I found such faith. I say to you, many will come from the east and the west and will recline with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob at the banquet in the kingdom of heaven. But the children of the kingdom will be driven out into the outer darkness, where there will be wailing and grinding of teeth. And Jesus said to the centurion, You may go. You have believed. Let it be done for you. And at that very hour, his servant was healed. 
Jesus entered the house of Peter and saw his mother-in-law lying in bed with fever. He touched her hand and the fever left her and she rose and waited on them. When it was evening, they brought him many who were possessed by demons and he drove out the spirits by a word and cured all the sick to fulfill what had been said by Isaiah the prophet. He took away our infirmities and all our diseases. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Good morning, dear friends. Today, I, before I begin my reflections, I'd like to wish you and pray and hope that you would have your best days ahead. Even though news and rumors around don't seem to bear that up, that I believe with God as our shield, as our umbrella in rainy days, as our light in darkness, our hope in despair, that we will have cause to sing, we will have cause to dance, we will have cause to be content, we will have cause to be happy. That's my hope. As we barrel down the next several days and weeks and months, very likely um, ravaged by this monster, by this disease. Today we see something that is happening in the book of Lamentation. So I'm going to focus for my reflection on the first reading and the gospel reading. If you listen to the book of Lamentation, the author speaks directly to what is wrong with the children of Israel. Speaks directly to what is wrong. Now, at this time, a lot was also going on. It's almost like a pandemic of sort. There was hunger in the land. There was disease in the land. And it didn't look like hope was going to come or help was going to come from anywhere. Children were dying in the streets from hunger and disease in the arms of their own parents who could not take care of them, who could not feed them, who could not find healing for them. And this is what the author said, worn out from weeping are my eyes. Now, could you imagine someone worn out from weeping? That means you have been crying consistently with so many deaths, maybe mom, God forbid, mom dead, died, died, uncle died, husband died, wife died. You, you realize you, you're crying from one person, you're weeping for one person, then your child dies. So that's how bad the situation was at this time. The people recognize that there is something they have not done right. They have not been, they have not, they, they have not earned God's God's protection on their side. And so they were getting to recognize that the reason why all of this is happening is because they seem to, based on their lifestyle, rejected and abandoned God. And so this suffering had a meaning. The meaning was that we have rejected God, that our ways of life, yeah, we profess God, but our ways of life, how we behave, how we act, and how we treat each other shows real rejection of what God represents. And so God withheld his mercy. God withheld his power. God withheld his healing. And this was the result of the consequences. It says, worn out are my eyes from weeping. Within me, all is ferment. My God is poured out on the ground because of the downfall of the daughter of my people. As child and infant faint away in the open spaces of the town. Now, child and infant, they faint. That's not something you see regularly. You don't just walk about on the street and see children fainting. 
But yeah, that was how desperate this situation was. No one had an idea how to handle it. it says in vain they asked their mothers, where is the grain? As they faint away like the wounded in the streets of the sea. And he goes on. It says the prophets, this is where we as church people come in play. It says the prophets have for you false and spacious visions. That means prophets, even the prophets have failed. Now the prophets are usually the conscience of the people. You know how your conscience will always prick you when you do something wrong, call you to responsibility, call you to accountability, call you to change. That's what the prophets, that's what ministers and, and leaders of God's people are supposed to do. The conscience of the people, the conscience of the state. So it says, even the prophets made false and specious visions. That means they took side and lied to the, to, the, to, to the people and lied to the leaders. They did not speak their truth. They did not call people, call people consciences of consciences of leaders. They did not hold them accountable and responsible to defend what is true. And he said, they did not lay bare your guilt. That means they did not show what you have done wrong and what is wrong with the people and their leaders. Instead, they placated the leaders and placated the people and made it look like everything was okay. But the sad news was that God could not be placated because God sees everything and God knows everything. And he says, they did not lay bed, bed, uh, bear your guilt to avert this faith. That means this all thing that's happening right now was completely avoidable, was completely preventable if prophets had done their job and called the people out. It says because they did not do that, they beheld for you in vision false and misleading portents. Now you may want to go on and read the entire text. And as I hear this, these words and I see what is happening here, this seems to reflect on what we are dealing with right now in our own country. This is exactly what is going on right now here in our country. We are living through the very desperate times that the children of Israel were at this time, facing a pandemic where people are worn out with grief. Some don't even have the time to grieve. Because while you're grieving the passing of someone, you're worried about your job and how to feed, feed your children and how to care. You're worrying about everything. So people are worn out. If you have not been touched yet by this disease, blessed are you and pray that you stay safe. But there are families in our streets right now, in our communities right now, that are worn out with grief. There's desperation. And scripture is telling us that unless we begin as prophets to tell people the truth and hold them accountable and expose their guilt, says this situation will not be averted. And I think it's from there that I would like to focus my reflection. If you see from the from the second day gospel reading, God is willing to do his part. In, this, in the gospel reading, we see a desperate man who is desperate. He's anxious, over anxious, because his servant is suffering, is sick, paralyzed, and suffering dreadfully. He comes to God and he says to Jesus, Lord, my servant is dying at home, paralyzed, suffering dreadfully. And Jesus says, I will come myself and cure him. So God is willing to intervene. God is willing to do for us what we need to help our country heal, whether healed from the virus, the coronavirus, or healed from the racial virus, racial injustices, and the tensions, racial tensions 
that enveloped our, our country at this time. God is willing to help us. But until we are willing to do what the prophets are supposed to do. It says, your prophets have for you false and spacious visions. See, as this, and this entire uh, thing has been going on, I've been waiting to hear the voices of prophets who have the platform to address everything that is wrong with our society. And I'm not saying that. Instead, I see people who do exactly what the prophets in Israel were doing, placating leaders and lying to the people, saying things that are misleading and false. The scripture says, this faith is a, it's, it's available. I mean, we can avert it just by being true to our mission, by speaking our truth. I don't know how to say this. There is enough scientific evidence out there, especially in dealing with the coronavirus, that social distancing, when there is no vaccine, when there is no cure, when there are no therapies to help in any disease, pandemic, or any other, any other virus that is spreading, there are measures that have been shown to work, not just in this time. They have been shown to work across centuries. Social distancing is one of them. That means people keep safe distance from each other to avoid contaminating or to avoid contracting the disease. I cannot understand why some people think that that's too much to ask. And yet, we make it look like there's nothing wrong with that. There's also enough evidence, scientific evidence, to show that at moments like this, where there is a pandemic, that covering your face to avoid droplets is very, very potent. That means it is very helpful, it's very efficient and effective. It is not foolproof. Nothing human is foolproof. It's not foolproof. But it helps to limit the level of, in, of, of infections. It has been shown to work. It is unacceptable when our leaders, and it doesn't matter who, whether it's a president or governors anywhere or mayors anywhere or pastors anywhere, when we don't speak what is true, that these things are helpful and that they do work, we put ourselves in the situation we're finding ourselves today. And this is not political because sometimes we make common things very political. When we are unable to, to anymore see anything except from the political lens, then it's impossible to even dialogue and speak truth to ones, to each other. Because I know that people who would hear me and think this is politics. I am just upset because I work in a hospital environment and I see the impact of all of this on patients and I know this is real. And I'm hurt because we are not doing what is right to protect our people. And people are dying. When right now, over 125,000 people are dead in just three months or four months. That should scare the hell out of anyone. As leaders, whether political or religious leaders, or whether family or local leaders, our major responsibility, our first responsibility is, is to protect your children or to protect your constituents or to protect the people under you. That's your first responsibility. The first, the first basic rule of human resource development, all right, is to protect what you have. So I encourage you, please, please, do what is right. It is not pro-life, and I'm a pro-life myself, but it's not pro-life for you to not protect me and for me to not protect you by wearing that common mask. Stop telling me how pro-life you are if you cannot do the simple thing to protect someone else. Stop telling me how pro-life you are if you cannot
to the sympathy to make sure someone who is more vulnerable, who is not as healthy as you, who is not as blessed as you, is safe from this disease. Stop telling me about your being pro-life. There's nothing pro-life about that. So I encourage you. God is willing to intervene and help us. People should not be dying like this. And we can do something about this. Then we must be willing to do simple things that are correct and right. We must be willing as leaders to call out those who are not willing to do this. Because the life of innocent people, the lives of innocent people are at stake at this time. See, when Jesus was called, he got involved. He wasn't sick. Someone else was. But he knew he could do something about it. He did not wait. He says, I'll come and do it myself. And I hope every one of us, every one of us, wherever you are, you will step up like Jesus did and begin to do something to help heal our society right now. Whether it's from this coronavirus or from the racial virus and the tensions that envelop and of course, damaging our society right now. We cannot continue like this. This is not sustainable. And I pray that God may help us to do what is right. That the prophets may stop speaking spacious and lies and defending the indefensible. That we may speak, start speaking truth and start defending what is right, what is true, and what has been proven to work. That is the only way to do God's work. Because God has called us to speak truth. Not to lie. And not to traffic in lies. And not to cover up and defend lies. This is unacceptable. My dear friends, if I'm upset, I, I, I am really upset. Because I see these things every day. See patients every day. Who are battling with this and this is real this is serious business and i'm certain that we cannot do the simple things that can help our society heal it's always a light to end by reminding you that you are still the delight of the almighty god and that god loves you very much let us pray our response will be lord hear our prayer god instructs us through his prophets his apostles and his own anointed son. We pray for strength to persevere in God's eyes and for speaking the truth that he has entrusted to us his ministers. That those anointed to lead the church may be prophets of truth and justice. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the word of God in scripture and tradition may be spirit and life for us today we pray to the Lord Lord hear our prayer that captives of drug and alcohol addiction may find freedom let us pray to the Lord Lord hear our prayer that as many parts of one body we may walk for each other especially for the poor and the marginalized in our community we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who are sick from the coronavirus, for those impacted from the racial virus, for the dead, for the bereaved, for those with special needs at this time, for those celebrating birthdays and anniversaries, for those whose hopes have been put on hold or paused, for those who live in fear and are desperate, that the mercy and kindness of God may be with them, that God may help them point a way forward. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That for those who have asked our prayers at this time, that God who knows and anticipates our needs may be with you to grant your heart's desires. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us ask our blessed mother's intercession as we say the Hail Holy Queen, Mother of mercies, our life, our sweetness, and our hope. To you do we cry, poor banished children of Eve. To you do we send up our sighs, mourning and weeping in this veil of tears. 
Turn that most gracious advocate, your eyes of mercy towards us. And after this our exile, show unto us the blessed fruit of our Lord Jesus. O clement, so loving, O sweet Virgin Mary. Amen. Let us pray. Father, hear the prayers of your church. One body, filled with one spirit. One people, called by the beloved Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Blessed I Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made to become our bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed I Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruits of the vine, and work of human hands become our spiritual thing. Blessed be God. Pray, my beloved sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours be acceptable to God, Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of his holy church. Amen. Let us pray. Receive, O Lord, the sacrifice of conciliation and praise, and grant that cleansed by his actions, we may make offering of a heart pleasing to you. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is to the right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your work through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of a virgin, Fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people, he stretched out his hands as he endured his passion, so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we are clean. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy therefore this gift, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, the Lord Jesus took bread. And giving thanks, he broke it. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up. In a similar way, when supper was ended, the Lord took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. With the second acclamation, let us proclaim the mystery of our faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and this chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have felt us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Timothy, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, 
that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have placed you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Let us rise and pray in the words our God gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant for our peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord Jesus be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of that peace. From me to all of you, may God's peace rest and abide forever. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Look up, my sisters and brothers, and behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. This moment of spiritual communion for all those who are still unable to receive your body and blood, O Lord, we pray. Most merciful God, I beg you that you may bless it with your sons and daughters as you visited with this centurion today. Attend to their needs, O oh God, especially their need to receive the body and blood that you offer us in this Mass. May they receive the full effect and all the blessings that this sacrament produces. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Let us pray. Renewed and nourished by the sacred body and precious blood of your Son, we ask of your mercy, O Lord, that what we celebrate with constant devotion may be our sure pledge of eternal redemption. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us say the prayer to St. Michael the Archangel. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray, and do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host. By the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits that prowl throughout the world, seeking the ruins of souls. Amen. Before the final blessing, I'd like to express my thanks to you for joining us at this Mass. I pray that we may get the lesson that God is trying to teach us, that we depend on God, but we also depend on each other. And I believe until we get that lesson, that the life of other person, the other person matters to me as much as my life matters to them. Until we're able to get that lesson, I'm sure we're going to stay in this situation for a long time. And that will be very sad and unfortunate. Because innocent people are going to die as a result of this. 
May God help us as a people to recognize this double truth that we wholly depend on God, that we also depend on each other. And what the other person does affects me and what I do affects you. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Almighty God bless and keep you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear friends, this Mass is ended. We go forth in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. I'd like to sing a, a song to our Blessed Mother on this Saturday. Immaculate Mary, your praises we sing. Renown in splendor with Jesus our King. Ave, Ave, Ave Maria. Ave, Ave Maria. In heaven, the blessed, thy glory proclaim. On earth, we thy children. In hope you're sleeping. Ave, Ave, Ave Maria. Ave, Ave Maria.